Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Nathan Daly. I'm your law enforcement translator here to give you guys in-depth insight on all things law enforcement. Now, just want a quick shout out to my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Welcome to the channel. Get comfortable. All right, let's dive into these issues. Okay, Cal Rittenhouse, right? We're still on standby. The jurors are still deliberating and they have been having some questions. They want to see more video, right? But this is the problem. <laughs> They want to see some video. One of the most important pieces of evidence that supports the prosecutor side is this FBI video, the drone video that everyone is talking about. Why is this video key? Why is it important? Because it shows in the moment while Kyle was running from Rosenbaum, he turned around. And as he turned around, the rifle was pointing at Rosenbaum. He turned back around in mid stride and then continued running right before the fatal shots, right? Why is this a problem? As you guys know, this is a strong piece of evidence that really helps the prosecutor side. Why is this an issue for the defense? Because again, if you watch the previous video, you guys, I touched on it, so I'm not going to speak on it too much here. Uh, basically, it gives a solid argument. Why? Because again, it opens up the door, it opens up the question to say, okay, who was in fear first, right? Did Kyle provoke a situation using his firearm. Now, before we dive into that, let me quickly just say this, okay? The mere presence of the gun, I know I hear the media talking about it, the mere presence of the gun is provoking in nature. That's how you personally feel, you guys. The reality is it's a Second Amendment right. We have to remember that, okay? Just because it makes you uncomfortable doesn't mean it's against the law. Okay, and this is before everybody knew his age or whatever the, the age restrictions were on any firearm. The reality is you can open carry a long gun. That's the reality of it, as long as you are legally able to do so, right? So just looking at the gun is not provocation enough. A lot of people are saying that. I don't think that's something that should be taken in consideration when looking at the facts. The facts are you can carry it. You can carry openly. OK, it might make you uncomfortable, but that's a personal problem. All right. So until we no longer have the Second Amendment, which is not going to happen, then you have to deal with it. Now, let's take a look at the issue with the video. What is the problem? As you guys know, if you haven't heard, the defense is asking for a mistrial. They want a mistrial. Here are their reasons. Apparently, when the FBI video was presented, they had a particular copy of that video that was, uh, I guess you would say it was low quality. It was a low quality video, it was grainy, right? Well, that's what everybody had initially. They started off with this grainy, low quality video. And then what happened? Well, apparently the prosecutor decided to get a specialist to enhance the video. Then they showed the enhanced video to the jurors. Now jurors get to see this enhanced footage of the interaction between Kyle and Rosenbaum. And in that moment, because it was enhanced, they were able to see the actual turning of Kyle's body with the rifle pointing at Rosenbaum, which completely elevated their case, right? Completely. They caught Kyle in a lie. Why? Because he said he never pointed his weapon at Rosenbaum. The video shows that he did. Listen, they shouldn't have put him on the stand, right? They had an ace in the hole. They had an ace with Kyle Rittenhouse. What'd they have? He never gave a statement. He never gave a statement. They had nothing to compare his story to. He was, in my opinion, he was scot-free, right? They had a horrible witness. The state had a horrible witness who did a horrible job and it helped build their case for self-defense. Kyle went on the stance and the prosecutor caught him in the lie, right? It is what it is. So now, what could have been the defense's defense, right? How do you defend against something like that? It's easy, actually. And this is the problem with attorneys. You're only as good as your imagination. You have to have a good imagination. Why? Because you have to think outside the box, right? What could they have said? Okay. Cal was being chased. Is it unnatural when you, when you have a rifle and you're turning that you're naturally turning and the gun is lifting, right? That could have been a, a justification for that. Hey, he's running in stride, right? He never stopped, right? My client never stopped. He never got into a shooting stance, right? He never did. He glanced. He turned completely glanced to see where he was at. 
the natural shifting of the body could have raised the rifle, you guys. Right? Whether you like it or not, I'm saying that's an argument. That's an counter argument. Yeah, it may look like he pointed it, but that wasn't my client's intentions, right? He's running. He's running at full speed. He's being chased. He looks to see how far away he is. He turned. He never stopped. He never pointed. He was never in a shooting stance. Then you have an expert. Hey, can you show me what a shooting stance is when you have a rifle? Yeah, you put this up, put the butt of the gun up to your cheek, right? And you, you're here. Boom, you're aimed. Your sights are lined up. You say, listen, jurors, my client never did that. He's running. I would even demonstrate, I'm running, turn around real quickly, and what do you see? You see the gun, of course, with the shift in the body weight, right? The twisting of the body, twisting of the torso. What do you see? The gun lifts up. It's an easy argument to make, easy counter argument. They didn't make that. I think that they were so caught off guard by that exposure, it threw them for a loop. It threw those two defense attorneys for a loop. They lack the imagination, right? You gotta be creative. It threw them. I tell you, we got a compressed version, which was not of the quality that they had. We learned that Friday, after the evidence had been closed. We learned that when we tried to play the video for your honor, and the state asked that their AV person be brought over to play their video, which was a higher quality. If this is a disorderly conduct or something, I get it. But we're talking about a potential life sentence here. So I'm making that request. Why did I say it through them? I'm, I'm explaining to you why. Follow me on this. They're asking for a mistrial. They asked for a mistrial yesterday. Why? They said, hey, listen, we all started off with this low quality video. Prosecu the prosecution went and they got a professional to enhance it. That's not the video that we had. So we were unable to prepare a solid defense. We missed this because we didn't have the same quality video. We would have changed our game plan based on that. And he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. Right? His whole entire game plan, their whole strategy was based on the evidence that they all shared equally. They based their strategy off of what they already had. He comes and advances the video and never shared it with the um, defense before presenting it to the jury. He's like, Your Honor, I need a mistrial. He said, this is not fair. Now, <laughs> here's my issue with that argument that the defense made. They should have objected to that evidence as they were seeing it. They never said anything, right? They never said anything. I think it was just because they were caught off guard, right? They did not know. They didn't have a plan for that to be exposed. They had nothing. And I'm pretty sure Kyle probably didn't even remember. And just the heat of the moment, you don't remember all your steps. It just is what it is. Take a look at this video. And that exhibit was played. It was not objected to. The authenticity was stipulated to. And the defense, I understand, they didn't realize it till Friday, watched this exhibit. They watched it on a television set a few feet from them. They, watched, they could have watched it on the monitors here. This did not seem to be a great issue until the defendant testified otherwise on the stand. And now all of a sudden, the defense is calling into question uh, technology and not wanting videos in, and it's all to protect their client. And I understand that is their job. I'm not criticizing them for this, but their client lied about this on the stand is the state's position. There seems to be evidence to support the position that he lied on the stand about, not, about raising the gun. He was confronted with the exhibit. He denied it. Here's my thing. The, the prosecution makes a very good rebuttal. What do they say? They say, listen, you guys had experts in all these areas. You saw the video just like I did. You had someone watch it. You had experts for photos. You had experts for videos. Your expert looked at it. They never thought to enhance it. That's a personal problem, right? The prosecutor said, now you want to have a mistrial because of some IT issues, you had access to the same type of professionals that I do, right? They did not say anything. That's a personal problem. Just because my guy looked at it, your guy looked at it, and your guy didn't say anything, what does that have to do with the state, right? You had the same video. It's the same exact evidence. All we did was clean it up a little bit. Genius.
<laughs> Genius, you guys. That was a rebuttal to the judge. Genius. The prosecutor was like, that's a personal problem. We're not going to do a mistrial because, you know, we went from 240 to 1080p, and it was. I mean, the quality was enhanced. The defense is in a bad situation because they can't go back and talk to the jury. They can't explain anything. They can't clean anything up. So now the jurors are sitting with this idea or with the evidence that he did turn around and the gun was pointed in his direction and they, they weren't able to provide a solid argument against it, right? They couldn't make a counter argument. It's too, it's too late. It's too late. That's why he's asking for a mistrial. And what the prosecutor said, so I thought was really genius as well. He said, the only reason why you want a mistrial now is because we were able to expose that one thing in the trial. One of the biggest things in this trial, something that you didn't account for. Now you want a mistrial. He's absolutely correct. But I see both sides. The jury has to look and consider this particular situation. What are they looking at? They are looking at Kyle Rittenhouse firing four shots into Rosenbaum. And the one that actually killed him was, was essentially the, the one that went through his back. The defense's argument is self-defense. Prosecutor is saying it's excessive. It's excessive. What are the jurors going to look like? The jurors are going to consider the idea that Kyle shot everybody one time, but shot Rosenbaum four. Four. And as he was falling right that's going to be taken in consideration so what do you guys think what do you think as we wait the jurors have still not um they're still deliberating as they should be right there's a lot on the line we're talking about someone facing life in prison whether you believe he deserves to be there or not but this is something that's serious and i'm glad that the jurors are taking their time combing through all the evidence combing through all the charges and making sure they have a solid understanding. As you guys know, if you watched my previous video, I was not a fan of the closing arguments from the defense. I felt like they did not do a great job. I felt like they're doing more complaining than informing and educating the jurors, right? They made it about the prosecutor. They made every, their arguments, they made them about the prosecution instead of selling their story and selling the self-defense. So, and at the same time, that was the perfect opportunity for them to provide a solid counter argument about why Kyle Rittenhouse did that turn and how it could be perceived that he was pointing the rifle and in fact happened to actually turn his body around. And with that, that shift in his torso, the gun was raised, but the intent was never to point it. Even... Whether you believe that or not, it's all about perception. And it's not what you know, it's what you can prove.